Hello and welcome to a proper UFC chat. I'm Dave Milhouse. We got Mason with me. We got Joe with me. It's UFC 295. Pay attention, okay? We're making money. We're going to make money today. This is what you're doing right now. You're at work. This is, you're live in the stock market, basically. You're making money today. Let's kick this shit right off. Um, boys, we have a an interesting one up first here. We were just talking before the show. Jamal Emmers takes on uh, Dennis Bazookia. Big step down for Emmers, who has faced pretty good competition. He's a very well-rounded guy. You know, he's scoring himself two takedowns every 15 minutes and still putting out like five strikes a minute landing, right? So um, decent volume, good jab, uh, good guillotines, reasonable wrestling. I don't really see how Bazookia uh, keeps up here. Uh, but yet money's kind of trickling in on him. Although uh, we are still talking minus two fifty Emmers now. It was like three thirty or so. Um, I I like Emmers, easy favorite or pass for me to kick off the show. Um, Mason, what do you think? Yeah, no, I hope this money keeps coming in on Bazooka because I can finally summon the courage to bet on Emmers. Because uh, yeah, I think he's just pretty much better in. I would argue damn near, if not every aspect uh, for this fight. I mean, I don't, and I don't think the Zuki is necessarily like a bum or bad or anything. I just, th- this is a bad matchup for it. We've already seen this fight with Sean Woodson. You got a tall, lengthy guy who can strike. He's got some grappling. Who's athletic. And uh, I know that the Zuki struggles in fights like that. So, why wouldn't you like Emmers? Well, it's because the dude has a track record of pulling stunts in the octagon and doing some just really dumb things. And like this, like minus 270 ish, like price tag it's in at now. That's just the perfect, like, mm, fuck you price tag to just do something ridiculously boneheaded. So it's a little bit scary. I, I, I've seen it before. I bet on Emmers versus Pat Sabatini. And that was like the fastest laugh to cry I've ever seen. So what are you thinking, Joe? I pretty much have the same read you do. Like uh, Emmers is 34. He's going to start getting a little older, a little slower. Um, he looked fine against Jack Jenkins the last time out about five months ago. As in like, hasn't started to like show decreases yet. Um, Bazooka is only 26. Going to be getting better. I I don't think you find many people as high on Bazooka as I am. Like I like him in most matchups. He's 26. Not as in the, like... I don't think he's a win most matchups, but I think he's, I like him more than the market value generally has him at and what people think about him. Um, in, in saying that, this is a tough fight for him. I think Emmers is probably better everywhere. Um, but like Mason said, his IQ is just the, that of a goldfish. Um, he's, you know, he, he's prone, like prone to make mistakes. Um, so I'm with Dave and Millhouse, or Dave. Is Millhouse. I'm with Dave and Mason. That's my favorite pass, but I don't think I can pull the trigger. So for me, it's a pass. Um, also, like the over, um, Bazooki, almost every fight goes to an over him. He's not very dangerous. He also is very durable, but at the current line, I don't think there's much value there at minus 245. But if you want to make Emmers a little bit more appealing, maybe Emmers by decision um, if you do like him. I believe that's plus 100 ish. Yeah, not bad. Um, on to the next fight, we got. Josh Van taking on Kevin um, Borjas. So this is a fight I haven't got too much in to film in. It's, we're still a little early in the week trying to get the breakdowns out for you as quick as possible. So I don't have too much to add here for what I remember off of memory. Um, I think Van is Borjas, but just a little bit younger and has more power. That's pretty much our breakdown. I, I like Van, but at the same time, I don't know. If I haven't gotten the film yet to let you all know if it's a bet or not. Or if my read could be wrong. So I'll pass it to... That's to whoever's next. <laughs> uh, I like Josh that. Van here too. Um, well, he's got one UFC fight, right? And so do we really want to draw uh, from that small data pool? And this is one of the times where I would say, yes, I do. Because we know who he fought very well. Very, very well. Uh, and we have a long history of stats to compare that to. And uh, look. Joshua Van outpaced uh, Zuma Gulab's schedule. Zuma Gulab's oh. fought good fighters like Paiva, Albazi, Manel Cape, uh, Jeff Molina, Charles Johnson. Is Zuma Gulab the best one in six UFC fighter of all time? 
of all time. He's the goat. He has to be. He is a. Fu- he's the fucking goat, man. This guy's lost three straight split decisions. Like, how much does that suck? Um, but anyway, so we know who Zumagulov is. Okay, this is a guy uh, who lands forty three percent of his strikes. We know his grappling game and all that. We know his level of competition is pretty good. He always fights these close fights. Well, Joshua Van out performed the schedule of Zuma Gulov by like a long shot. He landed eight strikes a minute on Zuma Gulov and he landed 51%, which is more than Zuma Gulov normally allows and way more strikes a minute than he allows. And Van held him to uh, a 64% defense. So only 36% of Zuma Gulov's got through. Um, so basically Van is the statistical goat of Zuma Gulov's schedule. Uh, and I think he's fought really good guys. So we can take that and assume that uh, that means he's definitely good enough to win this fight uh, against the newcomer here, Kevin. I I think this is a decent parlay piece. Josh, La, Josh Van is probably being underpriced by at least like 100, 100 cents, maybe 150 cents. Uh, Mace, what do you think? Uh, I think you guys are using goat a little too liberally here. Um, <laughs> the goat as in most general of all time. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, if Zuma Gulov didn't have a wild-ass haircut and multiple wives and, like, wasn't his character, we wouldn't give a shit about <laughs> Zuma Gulov. He's the one in six goat, man. That's all we're saying. Uh, but, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I think it's easy to like Van here. He's younger. He should be improving every time out. But I just can't get behind this price at all. Uh, dog or pass, pass for me. <laughs> I don't like the dog. But, I mean, I'm almost minus 300. I don't see how having one UFC fight, having a split against a guy who pretty mid – uh, makes you a three to one favorite. So I, uh, it's only it's like minus 225. Oh, is it going down? Yeah, it's gone down quite a bit. Like There's like two twenties out there. And I think the draft split decision with Zoom and Gulov. 65 on FanDuel. So maybe I'm just behind or need like, a refresh or something. But he beat the shit out of Zuma Gulov. Like, there's no way that should have been a split. He was easily winning 2 1. So I don't know. I was kind of proud of him. I enjoyed my film study. Yeah, no, I, I I like him. I think he's who I would pick to win. I just, I don't necessarily feel comfortable with his price. Okay. However, I also said the same about Jamal Emmers. Maybe you just go real early, hold your nose the first two fights and fucking see what happens at like, <laughs> almost pick them. <laughs> yeah. All right, fire up our next one, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Got John Castaneda and Kungyo Kang. And this, this is tough. I think this could, if there wasn't the name value later on the card, this could maybe be fight of the night. Because I think this is going to be a pretty, pretty all out banger that's close and back and forth. Uh, so I don't know. I kind of almost want to take the, the dog shot on Kang just because I think it's going to be a pretty close fight. I think it's going to go pretty late into the fight. And I don't know. I just, I think we'll see a little bit more out volume, better accuracy from the Kang side. So really lean dog, but I don't have a super strong opinion. I don't know if you got anything a little deeper in mind, Joe. Um, so Kang it- just to start with King, I guess his nickname is Mr. Perfect, which I feel is an insult to Kurt Henning, the real Mr. Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> in saying that, he's like a bang average fighter to me. Like he's a decent striker, not doesn't offer m- much grappling. I think Castaneda has more power, although King probably has more volume. Castaneda should have the wrestling upside here. I like Castaneda quite a bit here. He's five years younger. I think he has better wins. Like I, I'm pretty high on Miles Johns. I don't think too much too low of him for losing Daniel Santos. I'm pretty high on him. Fought Nathaniel Wood to a decision. Um I don't know. Give me some sexy Mexi here. The price keeps going down too. I liked him earlier this week at minus one sixty and now it's down to minus one thirty five. So I'm gonna hope the number keeps dropping and I'll probably lock in a bet on Johnny Castaneda. <clears throat> uh yeah I'm with Joe on this one. I, I don't think the line's high enough. I think Castaneda is the better boxer. Um I, I think like the wrestling of Kang, I guess, is a bit better than Castaneda's, but 
I don't Fuck really see it. Might even be the better wrestler. It's possibly it's like not as many takedowns averaged. Uh, Kang gets himself two every fifteen, which is decent. But like, we're in the large octagon here. If it was in the UFC Apex, maybe I'd feel a little bit different. I think that really helps the grappling out. Um, but I think Castaneda, yeah, he's got more power and he actually has more volume, like data backed. Uh, Kang only lands three strikes a minute over his career. And Castaneda is at 2.24. So, I mean, I got to think the striking is sort of close. But ultimately, I yeah, I, I think Castaneda probably does a little bit more damage and lands the better strikes. Kang's a better kicker, but I... I think he struggles to keep it in kicking range or uses grappling. So, uh, yeah, I made Castaneda like minus 220 and we're at minus 135. So um, I'm probably wrong um, on the minus 220, but I guess to be seen, you know, Um, that takes me to the next one. What are we rocking with here? Oh, we got Nazim Sadikov taking on uh, Slava Claus. Um, Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, no, sorry. I skipped it. Jared Jordan. Gordon. Yeah. We got Jared Gordon taking on Mark uh, Madsen here. I like Gordon a lot. Um, I think he should be more like minus 250. He's still underrated. Like, smoking Patty doesn't really matter, but um, he's got good defense, which kind of goes unnoticed for most people. Uh, his, his striking defense is solid. He doesn't get hit with big shots. He outlands his opponents by two strikes a minute. He can also wrestle. Um, his cardio is just fine. You know, I, I don't really know what to say here. I think he's fought the better competition too. Madsen's striking is mid and his wrestling, like, yeah, he's a good wrestler, but I just don't think he's winning fights with numbers like these. Um, he doesn't do anything with his wrestling, you know? So I don't know. I, I think Gordon easily outpoints him. Um, I don't think there will be a finish, but yeah, I, I struggle to imagine rounds where Madsen actually outlines Gordon. So unless he spends the entire time on his back, which I I just don't really think he will. He's improving his takedown defense as we've seen, and he's got decent jujitsu. So yeah, Gordon's one of my favorite plays. Mace, how about you? Yeah, I kind of like the Gordon by decision look, uh, and then maybe the Madsen by like KO sort of look. Gordon's biggest flaw his whole career has been his chin. So, I don't know. I I really wish I could live bet this fight because I want to see the first couple grappling exchanges. Uh, Is Madsen, the Olympic silver medalist, going to get the better of Gordon, who has better probably MMA wrestling versus technical wrestling? Uh, because if so, I want to live bet Madsen right away. But if Gordon can just stuff a takedown or get into a clinch against the cage and make it very non traditional wrestling, I think he's probably going to be able to find a way to win the majority of the moments over 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, that that getting clipped is always possible. Madsen does have an overhand with some power, so stay on your toes. Uh, for me, this is like Red Flag City. I don't, I don't want anything to do with this fight, more than likely. Um, a lot of times you see when two wrestlers fight each other, it can just become a stand-up boxing affair, and I don't rate either of their boxing too much. I think Gordon's better at BJJ, like better at probably MMA wrestling, better at striker. So obviously I do think Gordon's the favorite, but he is just coming off a head clash knockout where he was kind of messed up by the Bobby Green fight. He is getting older. He is slower. I've never been high on him. I think Marco Madsen's more physically strong. He's a better wrestler. It wouldn't shock me at all if Gordon spends half the fight on his back and you're sitting there screaming at your TV, do something. Um, I've never been high on Marco Madsen either. Like, I don't know what happened to Owen his name either. It's another thing. He used to be Marco Madsen. I was just Mark Madsen. Yeah. Um, so he lost, the o, he lost the O in his record. Now he lost the O in his last name. That makes no sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I This is a complete pass for me. I feel like it's a... No matter what, I won't feel comfortable betting on this fight. It's just a train wreck waiting to happen for me. Um, on the next one, I mm-hmm. we got uh, Sadikov taking on Slava Claus. I'm not going to try and pronounce both of their full names, to be honest. Mishlav Borshev. 
yeah, Borshev. Um, I'll say Slava Claus. It's more, more fun. So Slava Claus, he's a very great, uh, very good kickboxer. Um, he should have the advantage here striking. I guess the biggest question mark of this fight is, is uh, Sadikov going to leverage any, utilize any wrestling? I also think Sadikov may be able to push a better pace and be more physically strong. So if he could like work his way inside, I think he might have the better boxing. But Slava Claus is better on the feet. Like you're not gonna find too many people that can beat Slava Claus in a straight up kickboxing affair. So originally I was leaning Sadikov. Now I'm kind of leaving more Slava Claus. I think the odds are probably about right. I think it's close to a pick him. It kind of comes down to if Sadikov decides to grapple, how he does so, and how Borshev, if he can keep his distance, keep picking him apart. But I don't have too great a read on this one. I, I think the odds are about fair. Um, yeah, like honestly, uh, Slava Claus is a guy like a personality I like. I like his striking, but his takedown defense is some of the worst in the UFC. And, um, it's just a question of is uh Sadikov gonna put on the singlet? I can't really find a lot of footage of him doing it. it uh, he's got one takedown in the UFC and he's only attempted one takedown, so. I can't take Borishev based on that, basically. <laughs> but, I, like... Also, say, yeah. I do think Sadikov's fought much better competition. Like, he beat Terrence McKinney. Like, yeah. I think McKinney has his way with Borishev, probably. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. I think so. McKinney definitely can wrestle, and Borishev can't stop a takedown. Mike Davis took Borishev down nine times. <laughs> Mike Davis, bro. <laughs> Fucking dunked him nine times. Um and Diakizi put him down eleven times, bro. I mean, those are numbers. Those are fucking numbers. Mike Davis, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Um, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, is Sadikov gonna try to wrestle? It's just such a glaring, uh, clear path to victory. If it is at all close on the fight, and he dunks him, like, could easily steal around. Uh, so I'll pass. Uh, how about you, Mason? Yeah, I'm kind of on the like inverse of how the week's been for Joe, where I was leaning Slava cause earlier and then kind of after thinking about it a lot, started thinking a little bit more of the Nazim side. But a lot of that is just this weird blind faith that he's going to wrestle and there's really no evidence to support it. <laughs> Outside of I trust, Ray Longo and the folks up in New York he's trained with for Volan the boys like they game plan pretty well that they're known as a gym to not just come out with these bullshit game plans like they think about fights so I I don't want to trust it but I mean counting on people to do something different than you've never like ever seen him do in the octagon is a losing strategy I did it a lot last year and it sucked every time <laughs> yeah so i don't know i could also just see nazim if he's gonna fight with a bunch of forward pressure and like not even wrestling just on the feet keep uh slava claws on his back foot really kind of just make it dirty i think he can still come out with a win here uh because yeah if he, he just closes distance makes it a gritty cage fight uh, body shots in the clinch, stuff like that. I think he's going to be able to sap uh, Slava Claus out of there, but I don't know. I flip flop all the time on this fight. I'll probably end up making a bet on someone and it'll just be the wrong side because I flip flop so many times and then put money on one. And But uh, this next fight, very short notice, only been uh, made for a few days here. Mateus, Rebecca, Roosevelt, Roberts. Um, quite the big line on Rebecca. Uh, I guess I kind of get it. Uh, if you're coming off not even winning the ultimate fighter in a season that wasn't the deepest, to say. Uh, yeah. But still, plus 440, like minus 700, that feels pretty crazy. Roosevelt Roberts is has experience. Like, I think he can make this fight a lot closer than the line suggests. But uh, I don't think that necessarily means he wins. It just might be more of like a 275 at the end of the day. 
Or yeah, no? I don't know if you could find many people higher on a fighter than I am on like Roosevelt Roberts, like the same thing. Like I'm super high on him compared to the market generally. Um, I think he's one of those guys. If he puts it all together, he could be like a top ten in his division. Like if he were to just apply some fight IQ, apply like actually putting on some forward pressure and some aggression, um, and work on his fight IQ at times because like he has the tools. Like he's a lengthy fighter, has decent striking, decent wrestling. He's okay pretty much everywhere. But I feel like in this fight, Rebecca has the wrestling advantage, pretty much every advantage in the book besides maybe striking at distance. I feel like Rebecca is probably the better like power puncher, but I feel like Roberts may be able to just stick and move on him a little bit. It may be a little faster. And I'm not very high on like the Polish regional scene. Like I feel like when all these guys come over to the UFC, they're always overhyped. These 21 prospects, everyone says you can't miss. And they'll win a contender series fight. And they'll win against some shitter in on a Russian card. And all of a sudden they come to the US and fight a real competition. And the fight looks a little close. Then they lose their next three fights and are out of the UFC. It's just like a thing I tend to notice. Um, and saying that there's a few fighters that I'll be there no matter what for, you know, that, that Mbappe meme, I'll be there no matter what. It's like Kevin Lee, no matter what, I'm probably betting him. I don't care who it is. <laughs> Adrian Giannis, I'm there. Roosevelt I'm Roberts at there. plus 470. I'll be there. And I don't, to clarify, I don't know if he wins. I probably doubt he wins because, like, after that Austin Hubbard fight, I was screaming at my TV and I had no money on it because I told my friends he was going to win the season, Roberts. He lost to fucking Austin Hubbard. I am not high on it at all. But plus four seventy, you can't tell me that's not value. I I agree. And not only do I think he's like value, I think he's gonna win this fight. Let's go. He's he's go. he's seven inches taller, at, right? Yeah, seven inches taller and seven more inches of reach. Um, he's fought better competition. He's fought this year. He just did the whole stupid show and like, yeah, he did lose a split decision to Austin Hubbard, but I thought he won that fight though, to be fair. I I thought he did too. And, but like Austin Hubbard fights the most boring style ever. And in the UFC apex, if all you want to do is like cage push and bullshit like that, like you can do that. But at the same token, like Roberts was not letting it go in that fight. And I agree with you. Like he needs to fucking let his hands go and put it together, be more aggressive. Um, and he could be a decent fighter. His volume holds him back in his UFC tenure. He's only landing three strikes a minute, three strikes a minute is fucking garbage. Honestly, you should be landing like three leg kicks a minute. Never find the fucking hand. Is. Yeah, with, is. exactly. And honestly, I think his gas tank's better here. Um, I think he's got himself a pretty decent guillotine. If Rebecca shoots in, I don't know. I, I think he's like super live here and I, I have a weird feeling the third round will be his if it's in the third round. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It makes it at least 29, 28 ish plus four seventy. I don't know. I don't know how you could like minus 700 on Rebecca here in this match. If I get it short notice and I get, he's probably has more would... power like decisions. Only, if there, I'm going to see if that decisions only line comes out. I'm betting Roberts. Dude, like um, Roberts is ready. When you finish a show like that and Dana says, hey, be ready. Someone will drop out. And if you're ready, you're getting your shot. The guy's going to stay fucking ready. He just fought twice this year. He's ready to fucking rock. Uh, let's get on to the next fight. Tabitha Ricci, Lupita Godinez. Lupi, uh, she's let me down a couple times. But um, hmm. well, at least once, I remember. <laughs> but, uh, man, I... I want to say Ricci's kind of live here. Sometimes Godinez doesn't let her hands go enough. I do think like they're pretty equalish wrestling uh, and striking. This is a very close fight. Maybe Godinez is slightly better and a little bit thicker, but um, Ricci seems to be making the improvements quicker, in my opinion. Uh, Competition-wise, of course, though, not really comparable. Um, well, it is actually it's comparable. They both fought some bums and some good fighters. I forgot about the Firo fight. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a future champ if they want her. Um, I I like the over quite a bit. You know how uh, I do this thing where I, every week I, I do the yeah. exact same kind of pick. And I'll tell you, some of these women's overs should literally be mind, lined at like minus seven, eight, nine hundred, minus twelve hundred to go the distance. 
and the market just continues to not adjust these. They're like, ah, 350s enough, 400s enough. That's as high as you really see this shit. Um, this one probably goes the distance at a pretty high clip. Um, yeah, minus 350-ish. I think it, we're probably talking like minus 800. They're both good enough not to get finished, and neither of them are like... I just don't think either is good enough to get a finish either. So um, not that dangerous. It should be, yeah, minus eight, 800 ish. So that minus 350 right there, um, probably my proper parlay piece. Mason, tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, Luby Gudina is female Jamal Emmers. Um, do I think she wins this fight if she fights the, like, to the best of her abilities? Yes. Can I count on that? maybe not as much but I just I don't know I I've consistently underrated Ricci uh she's kind of made me pay for that quite a few times Jillian Robertson especially I went pretty hard on my girl Robertson um but yeah I just I I could see this fight playing out on the feet for the most part so I like Loopy's boxing more and I think she will get more damage off on Ricci, who's maybe a better point fighter. Uh, but I, I don't know. I lean loopy. I'm just trying to trying to have the guts to do it. To know, since you lay that bet that there's a chance she's going to go out there with an injured shoulder that she knew about the whole time, and then not throw any strikes and not wrestle and. <laughs> <laughs> like this said, Dave knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but come on, we can't be thinking about that shit. Just an easy pass if you can't trust her, but um so for this fight, I actually like Tabitha Ricci quite a bit here at Dog Money at like plus one fifty. I think she's fought the better competition. You guys both mentioned she fought uh Manion Faro. Um she did lose that fight and get dominated, but like I think Rose by a future champion, and she was fighting up a weight class. Um, since then, she's bounced back. Pollyanna Vienna is no slouch. Won that fight, beat Jillian Robertson. When Jillian Robertson moved down to 115, I thought Jillian Robertson was going to be a true force in that division, and she tamed her. And Godinez is kind of a similar fighter where it's more of a wrestler. Um, I guess Robert Robertson's more of she gets you the ground. That's when she's good. And wrestling that's good, but you get the point. Yeah. Um, I feel like Re- Richie... Probably has the better striking, better BJJ. Godinez has the better wrestling. But also, like Mason said, Godinez, her game plan sometimes is, is kind of shit. And she has the IQ of a, of a goldfish at times. So, like the Angela Hill fight was terrible. I remember that fight back because I bet on her in a parlay, I'm pretty sure. And I was sitting there like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, yeah, I think it, I think this fight's rather close. But at plus 150 in the fighter I'm leaning at, dog odds, I feel like I almost have to play her. Like I'd probably line her up at like minus 125, like not overly confident, but that's still pretty good value if you slightly lean a girl and she's plus 150. Um, yeah. you know, like Dave said, I do think she's improving a lot more than Godina's is in, in between each fight. Like you just notice her improving more than I notice Godina's improving. Um, so I do lean her maybe even more, like maybe like even minus 130, minus 140 um, in my mind when she is plus 150. So and the number is still growing too. I remember earlier this week it was plus 130 and I liked it, but not plus 150. I feel like. I have to bet it. Yeah, man, I might have to too. I'm glad you like it because I've been thinking about it all week. One of the better dogs on the card. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I'm talk, keep bringing up dog, <laughs> dog. So hopefully this might be a week of the dog for me. On the next fight, we got Steve Ersig taking on Alessandro Costa, and what is the prelim headliner? Um, which kind of surprised me here. Uh, Costa looked good in his last fight against Jimmy Flick, but I feel like I may have looked decent in that fight against Jimmy Flick. So. Don't know what to take away from that. Um, and then losing to Albazi's, you know, Albazi's a beast, so no harm in that. Um, so I still feel like the jury's still out on Costa. Like, we don't fully know what we're getting out of him. Urseg's a prospect I'm pretty high on. Um, he looked good against Dvorak coming in on short notice and won that fight as an underdog. And Dvorak's probably like a – he's one of those guys that's like fringe between probably 14 to 9. Like, he's like not top, truly top 10, but he's probably like a little better than top 15 in the rankings generally. So I do think he's good. He's – uh, young 28 year old prospect, 10 and one record. I feel like they're trying to shine him up a little bit here, but my main concerns are that he came 
from the Australian regional scene. Australian regional scene. We don't know what to fully take from his previous fights. I knew he looked good going into it. I forget if I bet him or not against Dvorak, but he looked good in that matchup. So I say it's one of those things we can't bash him for winning fights, right? Like he did what he had to do. It's not his fault that his regional scene kind of sucks. So um, I do like Ursek in this fight. One other bet I do like is the under two and a half at even money. Um, there has to be a reason why they're lining this fight up as a prelim headliner. And I think they're at worst they're expecting some violence. So they're not trying to sell you pay-per-view buys by having these two guys go out there and bore you to a decision. Then, you know, while the casuals just sitting there, meh. Do I really need to see Sabatini versus Lopez? <laughs> you know, so uh, okay. I expect at least see some balance. It's fine to do like the under at even money. 100% with you on the under. That's one of my violent spots of the week. This should be like more like minus 135. I, I think at a minimum, I probably would line it around minus 150. I'll kind of leave it at that. I lean Ursig. Um, like you said, the jury's still out on Costa. Um, I think this is a good fight for us to learn something, but. I think we're going to see an above average amount of violence. Um, so, yeah, at even money, that's a pretty damn hard lean for me. How about you, Mason? Yeah, I kind I like the Ursig side. Um, I think the move to the feature prelim is kind of one of those like get your conspiracy cap on moments because like that that's the UFC promoting their boy Ursig, I think. Um, looks super good against the Vorak. I lost a lot of money on that fight. And I mean, to your point, Joe, yeah, the regional scene he was in wasn't the best, but he did what he was supposed to. Like he finished all these guys. Yeah, I think he only went to decision once in that whole time. Um, so yeah, like sure, if you you can't help it if you only have cans to fight, but if you get cans to fight, the least you can do is crush them, and that's what he did. So. Good. Don't forget, he beat UFC juggernaut Shannon Ross in the first round. So, oh yeah, dude, fucking Granite Chin Shannon, <laughs> Granite Chin Shannon. Um, we but yeah, yeah. So I, I like Ursig. I I could see him getting a finish here. I mean, he was putting it on Dvorak at different times, and I I'm pretty high on Dvorak. I was really shocked at that whole performance. That was one of those immediately like. Right down in your notes, like Steve Ursig, remember <laughs> the next time around. And uh, yeah, here's my chance. And I'm I'm not terribly low on Costa. I had him to beat Flick, but I would have bet anyone to beat Flick by KO there. And I'll do it again if they book another fight. So I uh, I like the Ursig side pretty, uh, pretty confidently, I believe. All right, next we got a pretty interesting matchup, in my opinion. Uh, Pat Sabatini versus Diego Lopes. Uh, I could really see how you can make an argument for each side. I know some people feel pretty passionately about both sides of this fight. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see it play out. I what, The thing that concerns me from the Lopes side is his willingness to accept uh, bottom position. Because I think Sabatini is going to really be looking to kind of wet blanket Diego here. And uh, Diego was happy to spend time off his back. His danger is off of his back. Don't get me wrong. I think Pat Sabatini is the exact kind of guy not to get caught in something cheeky. So, I don't know. I could easily see Lopes... uh, almost catching a handful of submissions a couple of times over the fight and then just lose by decision because he gave up 11 minutes of control time on his back. And, uh, yeah, that's what scares me on it. However, if it does wipe completely and this becomes kickboxing and not MMA and just remove grappling completely, I do lean Lopes as the better striker. Uh, and I'm not necessarily sure if that's based in like science or anything. Maybe it's just more gut feel, but, uh, yeah, I just, I just got a bad feeling if I line up on the low side here, uh, I'm going to watch him spend way too much time on his back trying to play jujitsu against a guy that's not going to be easy to catch at all. Yeah. I've, I've never been too high on really either of these guys, to be honest. Um, also, is it Lopes or Lopez? I thought it was Lopez, but you're saying Lopes. Do I understand how to pronounce it? Or... Well, it's L-O-P-E-S. Lopez is easy. 
I would call him Lopez, but yeah, that was Lopez. Lopez, maybe whatever. Not like yeah, we see know. any other names, right? Bruce Buffer will vindicate me on Saturday. Just wait. Do yeah, we go. also how the hell is this fight on the main card of a major UFC pay per view in at MSG? Like I saw that, that's not shocked. Course. Anyway, for the actual breakdown, I guess it's semi shitting on both these guys who could both kick my ass. Um, Diego Lopez, I like May said, good BJJ. Uh, good volume striker. I feel like Pat Sabatini actually has more power, and Sabatini is a better wrestler. I lean Sabatini. I think the line should be close to like minus 150, but at the same time, I am kind of scared because both these guys can be kind of inconsistent. I feel like this be this is one of those fights where Sabatini is winning it until he's not, and all of a sudden he gets caught in some bullshit. And I'm just sitting there like, well, I saw that happening, and I still bet it. I'm smart. Like, yeah. So I might bet Sabatini, but I can also see an outcome where I'm. Sad that I bet Sabatini, but I feel like the value is on him for having the better power, better wrestling, probably better all around, but Lopez is probably better BJJ and maybe more volume. Yeah, I thought Sabatini should be a bigger favorite because he's going to win the minutes like pretty clearly, I think. Um, maybe Diego can push a bit of a pace and back him up, but I, I kind of don't really think so. I feel like Sabatini's the pressure guy. He's going to try to you know back him up and chain wrestle and all that boring stuff um and like you said diego's way too happy to accept uh bottom so it's a matter of what do you price him catching a sub at basically or sweeping and knocking out i i don't think i can really price that anywhere near 50 50 right but there's a couple things that scare me about this for one like you said, what's this doing on the main card of a pay-per-view at MSG? Well, that's not a spotlight for Pat Sabatini. It's a spotlight for the Brazilian. There's Brazilians headlining this. There's a Brazilian in the Andrade Dern fight. Both of them are technically Brazilian, even though Dern fights out of America now. Uh, you got Diego Lopes is a Brazilian. Costa's, I believe, Brazilian. Uh, Ricci is, right? Like there's a ton, there's a ton of them on this uh, on this card, and they just fought in Brazil, right? So the excitement's high, and well, who's fighting next week? Well, it just so happens Alex Pereira is fighting for a title. Maybe you should buy the pay per view, and they're all like, "Yeah." Uh, so I feel like the spotlight's supposed to be on Diego here. I don't know like how good Sabatini's submission defense is. We're going to find out. Uh, obviously, one of these guys should be a much larger favorite, though. And I have a weird feeling like, yeah, Sabatine's going to win every minute. Um, we're going to see really how good this guy's uh, jujitsu is. Uh, if it's good, he's going to have opportunities off his back, no doubt. So I don't know. I, I guess I have to go favorite or pass because I think Sabatini is probably going to look like a minus 250. Um, but I'm kind of talking myself out of it. Like, as I'm thinking about this, they're literally pricing this guy like close to a pick him and is it seems like he can't possibly win the minutes. So what the hell's going on here? Like obviously we're missing something. Maybe his striking is better and he can back Sabatini up. If that's the case, he'll literally look like a minus 250 and we'll all feel stupid. I might like Sabatini decisions only cuz I feel like if Lopez wins, it's by a, by a finish or yeah. Lopez finishes only cuz I feel like he's more likely to get the finish. Oh, um, way more, way more. So those are, you know, maybe play both sides however you like. Yep, I like that. Finishes only Lopez is like a great bet. I think we should find Check out what line. that uh, what that's brewing at. Uh, that takes us to the next one here. We got Matt Frivola taking on Benoit Saint Denis. I got a pretty hot take here. Um, if I made a top five must see UFC fighters, um, Benoit Saint Denis makes my list. He's probably like number three. Uh, Every fight this guy's in is like, it's awesome, okay? It's the kind of shit you want to tune in to see. And he happens to be fighting a guy who's very similar. Um, this probably goes under at a much higher clip than the line indicates. Uh, I seem like a minus 135, I think, on under one and a half. So a uh, violent spot I like. I wish it was a two and a half line, but odds makers can be realistic at times. Um, but yeah, I think these guys are going to throw down, dude. This is going to be a fucking sick fight. It probably ends in the first round. Um, 
I think there's got to be some value on Frivola because I think this just going to be such high variance. Uh, I think they're pretty similar in power and whatnot. Uh, St. Denis probably a little bit better everywhere, like a little bit, but um, all that kind of is thrown to the wind when you're just stepping into a phone booth and like literally doing the man dance, right? Uh, so value on Frivola, definitely like the under. Uh, Mason, what do you think? Yeah, dude, I, so, I cannot wait for this fight. This fight gives me so much excitement. It's uh, I'm probably going to stutter. Like, <laughs> it's got me flustered. Oh, um, I'm a guy who streams fights. Surprise, surprise. Um, I'm going to pony up and probably pay for this main card this weekend because I don't want to miss any minutes of a couple of these fights. This is one of them. Because yeah. what a what a what a car crash how how is this anything not than just like modern day gladiator shit it's gonna be awesome i hope someone doesn't just get caught clean early and goes out uh and we get robbed of like a war because this could be a fight of the year candidate if it goes the distance um i don't know lean frivola I'm biased though. That's shouted over by uh, my like appreciation for Matt. I think he's a cool dude. I really just like what he's about. I'm also a sucker for that camp, kind of like what I was saying with Nazim. I don't know what it is because it, it's they're not like the coolest guys. <laughs> it's an underdog story that everyone. Yeah, I'm just a about. sucker for it. It's the, the they kind of have that just like fuck you New York attitude. While he's smoking joints, eating bacon, egg, and cheese bagels. I'm just like, dude, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm i super stoked. Might take a little tiny stab on from Bola. Uh, I will look at the alternate under because, yeah, under two and a half, fight doesn't go. Like, fight doesn't go if it's under, like, minus 500, parlay piece. Barely, but yeah. I think it's worth it then. Joe, what are you, what are you thinking about this? So this is a fight where I feel like I'm. We're getting a ton of value, and a lot of people just don't see it yet. So like, and I could be completely wrong because you said this is a very high variance fight. Like it wouldn't shock me at all. Benoit Saint Denis puts the pressure on Vavola, catches him, sleeps him in two like forty five seconds. We're like, well, Joe was wrong, what an idiot. But like, really, was I wrong? Like it very well could happen. And I'm getting plus one eighty five. I think Vavola is clearly the side to bet on. If you can crack Drew Dober's chin, I think you can crack Saint Denis. And I know Saint Denis is having like known for having a crazy chin, but like he took a lifetime's worth of damage against Zaleski Dos Santos, and like sure he survived. And but like besides that, the people he's beating aren't really elite strikers since then. Like Stolse, like I don't think he's that good of a striker. I don't think he's that good. Period. Gabriel Miranda, I don't think he's very good. And he beat Ishmael Bonfim when Bonfim started gas towards the end of round one, but Bonfim looked good early in that fight. Um, and they beat Thago Mo- Moises, who's like not a very good striker either. So like Frivola is by far his toughest opponent striking since Zaleski Dos Santos. And Frivola can crack. Um, don't be wrong, Benoit Saint Denis can crack too. Like th- that's why you guys keep saying this fight so exciting because it is. It's going to be a car crash. But if I could take the guy in a car crash who at it's plus one eighty five has fought better strikers and it just came out against Drew Dober in a similar fight where we all thought it'd be a car crash and Dober's known to have the crazy chin, that chiseled chin. I'm gonna take for Vol every time. At plus twenty five, I think it's crazy value. I think it should be closer to a pick 'em, if not maybe even uh for Vol as a slight favorite. Um so plus twenty five I'm probably for sure betting him. Max I have a proper yet, parlay pick, ship it. I don't know about that, but it could be I our like proper it. consensus. Who knows? Um, on to the next fight. We got Jessica Andrade taking on Mackenzie Dern. So this is a fight that, like, originally, I know we talked about it. I think it was Sunday, and I said I haven't really gotten my research yet. But originally, liked before looking at odds, I liked Dern to win. But I thought it should be like Dern minus one fifty. But now, since looking at it and doing more research, more film, I kind of feel like the odds are right, or maybe you know, I might even lean Dern even heavier. Um, Andrade just hasn't impressed me her last three fights out. And before that, she beat the fuck out of Lauren Murphy. Like, Lauren Murphy's like 60 years old. Um, and she looked good. Like, granted, she looked good against Amanda Lemos, and that was only like a year and a half ago. But Mackenzie Dern's improving. Her striking does look better, and she keeps improving each fight. 
I do think that Andrew Hill was probably an overperformance with their striking. I don't think your striking is that good. I still give the striking edge to Andraj. And I could see a world where Andraj, uh, you know, can win this fight if she keeps it standing. The problem is, I feel like one takedown, I could very easily see her getting subbed. Um, you know, she got subbed by Blanchfield, subbed by Tatiana Suarez. Um, and Dern's the best BJJ player probably in the entire female division, like entire UFC. It was a female. Um She's starting to finally get better wrestling. Her striking's improving. And our key thing is here, like, Andraj is very good when she's equal of size, but I feel like Mackenzie Dern is a little bigger than her and will have the physicality advantage. Whereas when Andraj has the physicality advantage, that's when she is at her best. Like, remember back to Rose Dama Eunice fights? Like, she was more physically, like, imposing than Rose was. And I feel like those are the fights she looked the best in, whereas I feel like Dern is a bigger, um, more physically demanding straw weight than... Andraj. So, unfortunately, I don't like the dog here. I thought I would like Andraj at dog money, but I feel like Dern may be a parlay piece. Um, haven't bet it yet. Don't know if I will because I can see a world where Andraj wins, but it's hard also for me to pass on that smile. Mackenzie Dern, you know, she has a soft spot. She's another one where I'll be there no matter what. So, that could be talking to me too. Joe, 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 I got another hot take for you. Jessica Andrade should be a favorite in this fight. This isn't 125. This is 115. Andrade is the better wrestler. She is more physical than Dern, and she's the better striker. She lands way more strikes a minute. Like, what? what is she? What's she has doing? a strike advantage for sure. She's landing like six, 6.68 a minute to 3.3. She's going to literally double up Mackenzie Dern on the feet, and Mackenzie Dern has a 15% takedown accuracy. Uh, she doesn't even land a takedown every 15 minutes on average, 0 0.8. I do agree if it gets down there, it's going to be hairy, and Dern probably does squeeze her out. But value-wise, we got the better striker with the better grappling, or not grappling, but wrestling, who's fought the better level of competition by a mile, coming off three straight L's all at 125. Or sorry, no, Zhao Nam was at 115, but that's a tough fight. And um, you get you get a buy low opportunity on someone whose contract's about to round out because she just signed the big extension before the Blanchfield fight. So that must mean it's coming up again. Uh, she needs this win. And uh, I don't know. I, I like the under. I think it kind of covers both sides, but I think Andrade is going to be the, uh, the clear minute winner, like clear. Clear, clear, clear minute winner. So how do you not like it at plus 170? I don't know. Another prop I like, if you like Andraj, is KO, KO, TKO is only. Andraj is only minus 175. And Dern hasn't won a fight by strikes wow. since I don't know when. Like, I don't remember ever finishing a fight with strikes. Like she, She's one of those fighters that doesn't go for ground and pound. She uses ground and pound to set up a sub. And uh, I don't think she's sleeping on Josh on the feet. I think on Josh is clearly the better striker. So at minus 175, I feel like that should be like minus 300. Yeah, I think that's a pretty damn good line. That's a great point. Wowzers. Uh, yeah, so I, I like this to go under two and a half, but it's a little juicy at minus 175. Um, but if this goes the distance, um, don't be shocked at all if Jessica wins 30-27. And we can get a Jessica decision at like 425. I would way rather have that than a Mackenzie Dern decision. And in fact, the props Joe likes, uh, decisions only on Draj, like she's not going to lose a decision. Dern doesn't have the wrestling to dominate two of the three rounds. She can get a sub. I'll give her that, but uh, that's highway robbery. If that's a round to pick them. So yeah, obviously I think there's value on the dog. Uh, I like the under, it should be high variance, but, uh, Significant, significant value on the dog. I price on Draj around minus 140. So either I'm out to lunch or the market is. We'll find out. Mace, what do you think? Uh, this is one of those fights that makes me wish we were uh, a bit more into the like shoey crowd because I, I would go head to head with you here, Dave. I I think in Draj cooks, dude. Like she might be. I, I, I think she is over the hill. I don't think her heart or her head's in it. So, uh, you're being hard on her. She's very narrative here. 
she's she's been on this long losing streak she's been fighting for forever too so despite her age uh that's like that her age doesn't portray the longevity that she's had so far so she's much older than the number suggests she's 32. Uh, yeah but it's been fighting since like what 19 she's been in the ufc for like a decade too exactly yeah. So she's a lot of fight miles. Um, had a lot of crazy shit go on in her life for the last few years. Hasn't been training as much. Is currently right now in the middle of divorce. Needs money more than she's needed in the past. Is taking fights on short notices or bad matchups like Aaron Blanchfield and stuff like that all year pre-divorce. Mm-hmm. I think Aaron's she's going through going up too, here though. for her paycheck. She's probably going to come out with about four, maybe six minutes of absolute hell. Go crazy. Fight not smart because she's pissed off, tensed up, blow her load immediately, and lose. Uh, if Dern cannot get finished in the first round, I think she gets this fight pretty, uh, pretty easily. I, I could see Andraj following her to the mat if Dern pulls guard, like in the second round. I, I think she's not here for a long 15 minute fight. She's, uh, oh, who said it earlier? I was listening. I was, somebody said Andraj is like the female Bob Sapp. <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna give it some, uh, give it a good go and then take her money and get the hell out of there. And I, I agree. I think it's uh, Dern. She's looking so much better post-move to America, better training partners, better gyms. Uh, maybe she can even show us a double-A well, takedown. So. One, one other thing, too, to note is Dern even said her gym got uh, closed, so she created her own little mini-gym. So I don't know how that's going to factor this camp. So that happened just recently, too. Oh. Um, one here in the, in the last the- six months. Okay, I yeah. got another timeout here. I, I need a serious answer from you guys. Is Mackenzie Dern better than Tatiana Suarez? At wrestling, no, but I think that Just she at, has higher at MMA. Skill. Obviously, Suarez would be a favorite over Dern, right? I would say so. And if it's in I, question, I take, we'll say dude, moving I might up. take Dern. Really? Okay. Would I you say Dern that Dern's cover. better than Zhao Nan? Uh, well, Dern losses to Yan. I know. It was a close fight, though. That's I'm a, asking questions here. Okay. I, mean, <laughs> I know she lost to Sean Uh Aaron Blanchfield's better than Dern, right? Can we agree on that? Yeah. Is Valentina Shevchenko better than Dern? Yeah. Is we Rose Mama with... Yunus? No. I think because Dern might beat Rose. Present, close. If present day Rose versus Dern, I, I'd take Dern for sure. Okay, also, what about Wei like... Zhang? No. And prime Joanna champion. But look at the fighters on Draj beat. I feel like Dern beats all them. Lauren Murphy, Amanda Lemos. Would be, who knows? I guess it's kind of a close fight. Calvillo she beats. Ch- Ch- 100%. Ch- Ch- Kagan. But my point is, like, I, I don't think Dern's better you know, than any of her losses. Very valid. But I'm just saying that we also have a very different Jessica and Draj than the one that fought those two. I think this- she's, like, just done. I can see a way where Dave is definitely getting a good buy low because you're not going to see Andraj be worse. But at the same time, I do think she is getting worse and Dern's getting better. But like, it could be a That's spot fair. where Dave is super sharp where I I could easily see a market where Andraj keeps it standing and pieces apart during the whole time. But also, Dern's hard to finish. She took Andraj, some Andraj is doing all these commercials. She's taking weird partnerships with businesses in Brazil. Like, She's, she's all about the she's money. She's out for money, and she's setting herself up for post fights. Like she, she her, she's she's probably win a couple. Then otherwise, she's not going to be stacking those dollars. I guess the point I was trying to illustrate is I think every one of Andrade's losses in like the last seven years or six, seven years are all better than Mackenzie Dern. I'd make them all a favorite over Mackenzie Dern. I would definitely make Rose a favorite over her. Like Rose would literally just piece her up, and her jujitsu's probably good enough to survive also, um, who would have thought this would be the longest take we'd all would have debating a fight maybe in well, proper parlay history proper at least history there's a history. at least we'll get a lot of good sound bites out of this nonsense but i think it's a pretty big step down for andrage is what i'm saying um and she beats everyone worse than mckenzie so i don't know 
Anyway, we can move on to the next one if you guys are ready. Yeah. Is it uh I think it's Mace. Fire us up. Uh sorry, I uh I lost my place there. I got yeah. Sergey Pavlovich oh, takes on Tom Aspinall. Oh, let's go. People's main event. This fight, let's go. Uh if we had to lose John Jones, like this this makes me happy for being the replacement. Um, I, I like Tom Aspinall. I like him quite a bit. I've long been a fan of Tom. I've said he's a future heavyweight champion for quite a while. Um, I mean, you can say the same about Sergey. Dude is what nightmares are made of. He's like a, like a horror villain came to life. Like, dude's just cold, kind of emotionless, and just scary. But I think uh, Tom is going to be quicker here. I think he's got the hand speed and the more like lateral forward and back movement advantage here. And I think he's going to be able for the first two rounds to kind of dance around Sergey a little bit, not like school him, but like move around, really pick when he wants to engage, has a great jab and some good leg kicks. And if he just starts eating up Sergey's lead leg, landing a few jabs, uh, I think Sergey has the worst cardio here in the matchup. And I just think Tom can really start running away with it. Because if Sergey doesn't have his forward pressure boxing, uh, I'm not really sure he's as scary as uh, the polar bear he he is when he does have those facilities with him. So I, I like Tom. Just the the quickness, the athleticism. We think he's got good wrestling too. Some of the best British wrestling we've seen is true BJJ black belt. I just I don't know. This is my guy in the spot finally that I've always wanted him in. Would have had it a little sooner if his knee didn't explode kicking Curtis Blades. So yeah, I I, I got to ride with my boy Tom here. This might be a bold take, but I think both of these guys are highly overrated. I don't know, like, I think it also speaks because the heavyweight division is in generally kind of weaker than most other divisions. Just, like, don't be wrong, I think Aspinall is very skilled. But, like, if you go back and watch his Andre Arlovsky fight, like, he was starting to gas badly, and Arlovsky just gave him an easy rare naked choke. Like, I feel like that's one of those fights where if Arlovsky kept it standing, Arlovsky might have won that fight, which just sounds crazy. But he was starting to gas, and, like, May not win the fight, but it was a lot closer than it should have been with Aspinall being minus 250 against Arlovsky, and that was only two years ago. Granted, he has a good, but, like, it's a, I don't know if it warrants a title shot beating Marston, Tybura, and Volkov. Like, he hasn't beaten anyone elite, and, like, sure, he blew his knee against Curtis Blades, but, like, he can't I don't know, pull I don't a title shot off beating Tybura. You're so right. Like, it's absolute insanity. I get this is a fill-in fight, too, so who knows, and I do think Aspinall probably is the technically the most like top heavyweight because like Gan is I think probably the best striker, but he has holes in his wrestling. Aspinall's more well rounded. And then for Spivak, I feel like the same way. I feel like he's gonna get broad checked eventually too. Like he's just winning all these fights in under five minutes. But if you go back and watch his Overeem fight, Overeem took him down and mauled him in the first round. And we just haven't seen someone to be able to do that. So I feel like Aspinall is technically better everywhere, but power is scary. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, there's a reason Spivak's winning these fights, and I, I wouldn't say, like, maybe, maybe me calling both these guys overrated or could be fraud-checked. I just see ways that they can lose, but at the same time, there, there's a reason why these guys are both fighting for a title. They both are very good fighters, but um, I see areas where they can be beat um, and where they haven't, a lot of people haven't noticed yet. So, hey, I, I lean Aspinall, believe. but it wouldn't shop it off. All of a sudden, you know, Spivak lands something crazy and another British fighter loses a title fight and we're still waiting for another Bisbing to come around. Um, so I guess I, I'll probably be on Aspinall at minus 118 since I think he's better everywhere besides power. And at minus 118, like, kind of have to be. But I'm going to be clenching my cheeks and drinking a beer while doing so. <laughs> Are you going to butt chug it? <laughs> <laughs> if, if he wins, maybe. Okay, here's the deal, guys. You guys are... For getting a couple key factors. Aspinall might be the most well-rounded heavyweight in the UFC, like period. Um, so I get how yeah, it's hard not to back him. But this is has nothing to do with minute winning. There's no chance this goes the distance. Um, 
do you guys know what <laughs> if this fight doesn't uh go over one and a half let's say let's say it goes over one and a half then the under one and a half on pavlovich and aspinall's entire ufc history would still be hitting at a 93 percent clip all seven of pavlovich's have ended in the first round and six out of seven of toms have been first round and the other one was a minute into round two so uh, all 14 fights from these two fighters has gone under one and a half and the under one and a half sitting at like minus 200 a 66% probability in something that's happened hundred percent of the time. And even if it doesn't happen, the new total would be 93%, which is like what? Minus 1400. Let me bring it up. That would be your thing is team. like Aspinall's by far has by far the best movement on anyone. Pavlovich has faced. And it wouldn't that's shock fun. me if Aspinall play, fights very safe this fight and just keeps his distance and pitter patters and gets out of the way of all Pavlovich's power. And it can go over, but one and a half, you still have time in that second round. I do feel like both these guys' gas tanks are questionable at best, and someone will get caught before them too. So, I'm 100% confident this goes under one and a half. Um, I, I think Tom Aspinall can be hit, uh, but the basically the first guy to land 25 strikes wins this fight, and I don't even think it'll take 25. I'm How pretty sure about one. It. Pa Pavlovich might take one, and like Aspinall likes to bounce in and out. This guy doesn't give a fuck, dude. He's going to bite down on the mouthpiece and meet him in the middle. This fight might last like 32 seconds. I'm not even kidding. Like, I make that like more of a dude. realistic probability than seeing round two. What's also crazy is if Aspinall puts on a singlet, I think he wins this fight pretty easily too. Yeah, he could get on top and just Donkey Kong him yeah, um, was... and gas him out. I agree. He's got more paths, but uh, it's not going to come down to minute winning. Like, someone's definitely getting finished. And I, I truly believe it's under one and a half. This is like the violent spot of of November. Uh, minus 210 is not high enough. And like, if you're out there making parlays and whatnot, like you can start adjusting this to like under two and a half is minus 530. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no way. I just can't imagine it going over that. Every now and then shit like that does go down. But um, I like Pavlovich in this fight. I would rather have the plus 100, 110. Because I just, I think what you're betting on is just rock em, sock em robots. I think he hits a little bit harder. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't love it at all, but I like that under. Um, I think people are sleeping. There's mathematically, um, that line is horrible. It's horrible. All right, it's main event time. Alex Pereira takes on Yuri Prohaska, interim light heavyweight title. Um, we've all got some different feelings on this one, but I think Alex Pereira is like a super elite striker, not just power, but technique is extremely on point. And there's a couple things I want to point out here. For one, Alex Pereira has had a very good, um, striking versus expected. Okay. He's got himself a 51% defense and that's fighting guys like Adesanya, Strickland, who comes forward pressure boxing, I guess, Blockowitz. Uh, that's a pretty decent uh, level of competition over the last four, I would say. The three fights on Yuri's schedule, sure, they're they're good tests, but I think Adesanya twice and and Jan is better than like Ozdemir Reyes and Teixeira. No, the part to me that's alarming is Glover. <laughs> Glover is like a wrestler, basically, right? Glover landed 68% of his significant uh, significant strikes against Yuri. And it's not just because Yuri got tired. Because actually in round one, Glover came out and landed 75%. Like that kind of accuracy is incredible. If Glover's doing that, it tells me two things. A, he's seen something in the film that he could take advantage of. And B, obviously Yuri's just really not that good defensively. Uh, over his three fights... Yuri's got a 40% striking defense, meaning 60% are getting through. Um, and I think we all know damn well that who he's facing on Saturday night is not just the best striker he's ever faced in his life, but like by a huge, huge margin. There's no way that he's going to have a better defense than 40% because this is obviously a horrible spot on the schedule. Uh, for him it's a below you know an underperformance spot 
So should he outperform his averages against Pereira? No, not a chance should he. So this gets really weird because if Pereira is going to land with that kind of accuracy, I just don't really see a world where he loses at a reasonable clip uh, at all. So I think um, I think Yuri's kind of like a pretender. Guy's decent. He's entertaining. He's like mythical. He's got some power, but he's got awkward technique. I think he's quite a bit slower than Pereira. Technique-wise, nowhere near it. Uh, I, I'm i almost ashamed to say, like, I think Pereira should be, like, minus 250. And this is a main event, so I kind of doubt their line's off as much as I think it probably is. So I probably am wrong on that, but it's lined at, like, minus 140, so it wouldn't be outlandish to think in hindsight maybe this should have been minus 200. Uh, but I think he's pretty much the clear minute winner and has more finishing upside, Pereira. So, um, yeah, all day for me. Not even a question in my mind. Um, literally, just a, elite striking numbers, plus 11% in his uh, striking versus expected uh, to a guy who's minus 5% with very average uh, UFC numbers. You can't let Glover land 68% on you. You just can't. So, uh Pereira, all day. Mason, what do you think? Yeah, I don't have too much to add. I, I'm not sure I've ever agreed more with you in like just every, <laughs> every word you said. Uh, the only things I'll add are I've never really seen Yuri have to defend leg kicks. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles Pereira's leg kicks. And, I mean, if you chew up Yuri's calf, this fight might get ugly. You know, um, and then also one of the most successful strikes Glover had in the whole fight landed it repeatedly, landed it big, and used it with a lot of power and caused a lot of damage. Left hook. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You don't want to get one. hit by by Alex Pereira. Hey, uh, I have a question. Who's Alex That's Pereira's coach? Glover. Glover. Obviously, Glover knows exactly how to get through, right? Like, fucking prayer is going to have a field day, right? Anyway, continue your breakdown. I'm like, I'm shocked at this line. Continue. No, I I love it, too. Uh, Joe, do you, you feel the other way? I'm a Yuri fan. I like the guy. So it's I like the guy. wild with this much confidence to be, like, banging the chest, but... You guys have taken a lot of my steam away, but I'm also very big on Alex Pereira in this fight. But a few things to add. So the Yuri Prohoshka, he's been a fighter that I've been kind of waiting to fade. Like Volkan, like Ozmir rocked him. People don't remember this too often, but Reyes rocked him, had him really hurt, could have finished the fight, and Reyes shot a guillotine, and they got finished like later that same round. Like Yuri covered well, but like Yuri was like, what, like out, like damn near out. If Reyes went to ground and pound, he had the fight won. Um, and that's Dominic Reyes, and we've seen how he's kind of fought since then, which hasn't been very good. But again, that spinning elbow probably changed his trajectory too. Like Reyes' chin after that elbow was fucked, and that was nasty. Um, but then Mason brought the point I was going to bring up too is uh, that left hook that Glover kept landing. If that's Alex Pereira's best weapon, that's his power shot is his power left hook, and Glover was landing that well. And Yuri gets rocked almost rock rock dropped wobbled almost every single fight. Um, now he's fighting his most elite striker yet in Alex Pereira. The reasons why I can, like, have to, when I have these super strong leans, I almost have to think contradictory, like, how is this only minus 122? And there's are a few things that scare me, is middleweights that move up to light heavyweight traditionally don't have a ton of success. Like, I'm sure you can point out the Jans. Asanya didn't win the belt when he moved up. I think Jan kind of won, was a champion, but he had easier fights when he fought when light heavyweight was kind of its weakest in my opinion like i don't think jan blahovich is like a truly dominant champion no offense to jan blahovich um and yuri is probably going to be bigger than alex but another thing is countering that is alex is huge for middleweight and is even big probably for light heavyweight so like i feel like size is going to be as big of an issue for other middleweights as it would be for alex the other thing is alex fights a lot off his back foot at times where i feel like yuri could be a pressure fighter and start pressuring him and could win like this could be one of those fights where it looks like Yuri's winning until he's not. And when he's not, I feel like he's going to be like, out, out. Out, out. Um, yeah, like yeah. Hospital. he's going to the hospital. Yeah, like it wouldn't shock me at all if, if Yuri's warrior spirit is what sends him to the hospital. I'm worried for um, him. Yeah. Yeah. 
but in saying that, I could see a situation where this goes over. You know, Yuri's not giving pro- Alex the look right away. Over one and a half, I, I don't hate. Because um, even look at his fights, like he, although Pereira hits like a truck, it took him until round two, late in round two, for um, his debut fight. I forget who the guy's name is, that Greek fighter. He went to decision, Bruno well, Silva. Was- he finished Asanya in round five. He got finished by Asanya in round two, and then he just went to decision with uh, Jan Blachowicz. So I don't hate over one and a half either, but this is one of those fights where I just feel like I've been waiting forever to fade Yuri when he fights one of these really tactical strikers, and he's fighting one of the most tactical ones that he could have been booked against. Like, it, Don't me wrong, Yuri could probably sing look, look good, and we could be saying – what happened, but I feel like the odds of that are so low. Like, I'm kind of with you guys. I feel like it should be, Pajero should be like minus 200. And I've been waiting to fade Yuri for so long in the perfect matchup, and I think we got it. It's one of those, we got him, boys. Like We, we got it. Yeah, I, like, I'm uh, a little confused like, at the line move. Like, who who's like, oh, man, Yuri plus 110. Let me open up my checkbook on a Tuesday. That's a little frightening, but... Um, to be fair, I can see how this is a pick. I'm like, Yuri, look at just if you're wiki capping this, you have a guy that's 29 and 3 and 1 taking on a guy who's only 8 and 2. And the, the 8 and 2 guy's 36 years old, is moving up in weight class. If I'm wiki capping it, I might be like, you just, he won a the title shot by winning a split decision. Which is kind of cappers don't move lines, though. Like, this is a, this is a big boy in Yuri. But I actually think Pereira's going to look bigger than him at the faceoffs. They're both big, big middle or big light heavyweights. I, I just think, think half speed wise is close, dude. Like, Yuri likes to have his hands low, do weird fucking shit. Like, Pereira's going to be snapping those kicks and shit out with yeah, no hands even close to really, the face. The leg kicks can really make a difference, I think. And he yeah, stands wide legged, too, too, right? Like a fucking bozo. Yeah, his like kind of karate stance. I feel like with those leg kicks would be. He's gonna get hell. fucking chewed, bro. Yeah, this is like I, I can, I honestly am. I can't fucking believe this bullshit line. Um, I'm putting a stamp on it. I'm personally gonna be on it pretty large. Let's get into the segment of the show that everyone's here for. I and mean, even though we lost last week, I mean, we sh- probably shouldn't have. We had uh, we we're down to a minus six hundred, who was like clearly winning the fight until he gassed. Yeah, maybe you know, maybe that wasn't the pick in hindsight. Um, saying that we're still seven and five at plus five point two eight units. Like, yeah, like we've had some proper parlays that are you know pushing the plus two hundreds. Um, yeah, I don't see why we don't get back on track here. Let's make it eight and five. My piece for the proper parlay. I'll let you guys both go first. Okay, whoever whoever wants to kick this off, kick it off. Mason, I don't like a ton of parlay pieces this week, to be honest. Well, there's so much. I mean, if we're being like, give me Roosevelt Roberts I'm plus four like Alex Pereira. That's what I was kind yeah, of thinking. Do it, beautiful. Yeah, I was even thinking of it too. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you're feeling, then make it your leg. We each need to be more responsible for our our check marks. So. Let's not worry about what the other guys love. Let's just find the one we're most certain about. Now, I, I'm Pereira or Aspinall. Those, those are the two that I'm torn between, but I lean Pereira. I think at this, they're basically the same prices, and I think danger-wise, it's not even comparable. Like, Pavlovich is way more fucking dangerous than Yuri, in yeah. my opinion. Put, put, me in, put me in for uh, Pereira. This be one of those cards of a lot of one-unit bets and Odds that are close to pick them, but I'm not overly confident in any of them. So I, besides, I think Pereira is probably my favorite bet too. Okay, double down on Pereira. <laughs> yeah, two two Pereiras. I'll take. Uh, uh, if you're at yours, and I'll find one. I, I got. I'll take uh, Godinez over two and a half. This is a total I like a lot too. Uh, could you. Can you guys build it then? I don't have I don't have that out yet for FanDuel. It's minus four ten for me. Yeah, I got minus four hundred here. Um that's for uh 
I have to at, at, back and edit this while Joe figures out what the fuck he's going to do for his proper parlay. <laughs> uh, um, stuff we should probably think about before the show. Or, <laughs> they make, that's so fun, though. Yeah, but do people want to sit here for another five minutes? I don't know. Let's cut the ratings, dude. View time. I'm that's kidding. Uh, for value, I guess. Let's go... Sexy Mexi, John Castaneda. Sexy. That's plus two ninety four. What? Uh, hold on a second. I don't Did love you it. Plus two ninety four. Yeah, that's sick. We're winning this one. Yeah, that's. Sick. Is there anything Mason you like a lot besides Pereira? If you don't like sexy, I mean, Mexi. if you. I feel like you're not very sold on Castaneda. I, I feel more confident in my read on Ursig, I think, than you do on yours for Castaneda, just from how you said that. Yeah, let's do... Uh, Boys, Ursig. this is how we like get in trouble. Too. This is how we always get in trouble. We're doing um, Ursig. Just pick your favorite picks. Me and Mason switch. Okay, or Ursig's minus Ursig. 188. I have him at minus one ninety eight. Dang. Well, I got on bet three six five. I have minus one twenty five for Pereira, one eighty eight for Ursig, and uh, minus. This is still plus two forty for me. Uh, minus three sixty for over two and a half. So this is actually so bet three six five's got it going on all three, plus two fifty two. Book it. I like it. I'm not uh, I'm not sure about the Earth's egg fight at all. I still got to tape it a little bit better, but hey, for doesn't the matter. It's not my leg. Consensus, if we start doing that, I think it has to be Pereira. How oh, yeah. we all are. Let's do it. I think and, we should start uh, the proper I think consensus. The dog well. consensus is uh, for Vola. Vola. The dog yeah. of the week for Vola. The proper dog? Okay, proper dog. Pure, purebred. I almost added Favola to the proper parlay because <laughs> I was like, this is the best value, but not in the parlay. Okay. Well, we're going to start up the proper purebred as well. Okay. And uh, we'll start tracking oh. these. And if it's not worth putting out, then we'll quit. But um, genius idea, too. We could start doing Dave, I don't know if you have any dogs, but I know Mason has dogs. I, ha- I have a puppy, Fred. We could start adding a picture of our dogs each week with boom. the dog of the week. And that's content, folks. I don't have Watch a dog. Watch before but your eyes. We'll we'll submit some dog pictures. Okay, plus one eighty seven for Freebola. We have a consensus. He's the best dog on the board. Um, yeah. All right then. And we're going with um, we're going with Pereira for the proper consensus at minus one twenty five. Minus one twenty two on DraftKings Boom. too. You guys agree with that? Yeah, I like Pereira a lot. Hello? Am I muted? No, I said I like prayer a lot. I can't hear anything. Oh. We hear you. you Your audio will be down. My uh, my speaker turned off. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> That's always good uh, in the middle of a video. Okay. Pereira, minus 125. For Vola, plus 187. Proper parlay winning this week. We're going with Pereira. We're going with Ricci over two and a half. And we're Ursig. going with St- Stephen Ursig, uh, plus 252 this parlay. Hey, boys, if we make it to eight and five, we're literally, what are we back at? Like eight units. So sick. So uh, thank you guys for watching. We're going to make some money. I told you guys to pay attention at the, beginning, at the beginning of this video, okay? Pay attention. We're making money this week. Take that shit to the bank. Follow us on social media, too, on Twitter. Yeah. At Fire by Mike Capper. At Mason. At MB. MB, MB, the MMA man. How do you guys not know that? Okay. And I'm Dave Milhouse. We'll see you. Um, we'll see you next week. Cheers, y'all. Peace.